Have you got a Neptune Apex Energy Bar 832? Everything appears to be in working order, but you're not getting any power on the outlets? If so, I may have the fix for you. Stay tuned. This morning I came down uh, and I saw an alert on one of my uh, energy bars. Um, this one here, it's just not getting, it's got that voltage uh, exclamation point, it's just not getting any power. Um, you click on here, nothing there, nothing's going on. And I could see sometime during the night, uh, it just went out. So I came down here, tried resetting everything, um, plugged everything out, you know, unplugged everything, plugged it back in, uh, just, you know, Nothing I do uh, is making it work again. Um, however, I can control the outlets and all the little lights come on and off as if it is working. Uh, it's showing up uh, in the dashboard as if it's you know, okay. Just not getting any power on the outlets. Um, and the one thing you will notice is that you know, when you do uh, turn the outlets you know, off and on, you don't hear that little familiar click uh, of the relay going, uh, turning itself on and off. Um, well... It turns out uh, something has gone wrong with this thing, and I have found a fix for it online, and we're going to see if we can fix this thing today. Okay, so I take no credit for this repair. Um, all credit should go to Made for That on Reef to Reef. Uh, I found this nice post online, and he goes into some really good detailed instructions um, on how to perform the fix. Uh, it's really not hard, uh, but you do need the right tools and right skill set to pull it off um, and we'll see how I can make out with it and well this is actually going to be the second time I'm doing this repair um, this is the second time one of these things have failed on me in the exact same way a few months ago uh, this one failed exact same thing I panicked I went online I bought a new one I had it rush shipped to me ended up costing me about $300 to get one of these things replaced it was out of warranty um, sure I could have probably gone to Neptune asked them to fix it but that's still going to be expensive and take a while uh, but I needed one right away. Uh, so yeah, so got a brand new one in there. And this one's been sitting aside. I always intended to do this fix. Uh, never got around to it. I did order the parts. Um, but today the second one's gone down. This is meant to be my spare. or <laughs> And, you know, now I need to do it. Uh, so I fixed this one already. Uh, it's working fine. I'm going to attempt uh, to fix that one over there. And uh, see if we can get that one working too. And I'm going to document it. You can come along with me. So I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly uh, what's gone wrong here. I just did follow the instructions. Uh, but apparently this is the part that has failed. Um, some sort of a power regulator, power module. Um, and yeah, so this part uh, is a very cheap part. Um, I got mine on AliExpress. Uh, here's a brand new one. Same part, same exact thing. Um, less than two dollars i think they're like a dollar 94 each um, does take a few weeks to get here from china you can get them on amazon I think about eight or nine dollars uh, in the u.s um, if you, you need one right away but um, if you got one of these things chances are uh, you may run into this problem at some point probably not a bad idea to pick a few of these up as a matter of fact uh, i'm going to order about another half dozen of these just so i have them on hand in case this does happen again um, but you know upon inspection of this I could see right here, whatever was right there is no longer there. It just seems to have completely uh, disintegrated. And this is the other board. Um, and you could see in that very same location up here, there is something there. I guess that's a little capacitor or something. I don't know. Uh, but maybe that's the actual uh, cause of failure. Um, but regardless, I mean, this board is cheap enough to just replace the whole thing. Um, the repair process would pretty much be the same because you got to take this whole thing out. And you're probably better off just replacing the, the whole module with you know this cheap enough. Uh, so that's what we're going to attempt today. Okay, so first thing you're going to need to do um, is open this thing up. And I will, uh, before we even attempt that, uh, you are working with mains power here. This can shock you. It can kill you. So if you're not comfortable with working with electricity, don't do this. Um, and don't say he didn't warn you. But it, you know, if you know what you're doing and you take the right precautions, um, there's really not much that's going to go wrong. But 
please, you know, be safe. Um, so in order to get this thing open, it's pretty easy. Uh, there's only really three screws here, you know, one, two, and three. Uh, I'm going to take them out now and remove the back shell, and we'll see what's inside. All right, so once you have the screws removed, the back plate can be lifted off, but you do need to be careful because it is still connected in a few places. Let's just flip it over. Maybe this will be a better idea. Take off the top cover. I'm going to fold it forward. Now you do have to watch. There are two connections here. There's this little ribbon cable and this little power lead. I guess that's LEDs are up here. Um, so I want to remove this uh, so it's not in my way. Um, should be able to just pop this off. And there is plenty of dust in here. Why don't we give us a nice cleaning first? There, there we go. All right, and then let's just pop these out of here. You just have to pull the tab back, and this should pull out. And then this guy right here, this ribbon cable, you do have to be very careful. I'm just going to push this little black piece back. And that should unlock the cable. You do have to be very careful. These things are fragile. So I'll push back a little bit. And then you can just remove the cable from there. And we can put this aside. Now that we have that off... Oops. I'm going to worry about that for now. Uh, this is the part that we are concerned with. Um, this board right here. And we're going to need to uh, desolder this from the main board. It is separated by a little uh, gap here. Um, so the best thing to do is take this whole board out of here uh, so we can access it from the back side. And there are two other screws we need to remove. Uh, one right here and one back here. And that should allow us to take this entire assembly out of this uh, gray shell. And here's something I just <laughs> noticed. Uh, I want to take this screw out. And there is a blob of uh, hot glue shoved in there. And they've also done the same thing back here. Maybe that's uh, an indication so that they know somebody's been in here you know, tampering with things. So just be aware of that. Looks like they did glue these things. Uh, put some glue in them for some reason. Okay, so I did get them out. I don't know why they put glue in these screws. That was kind of a mean thing to do. I guess they don't want you uh, fixing these things. I don't know. But there was two of them. Um, and the last thing you may need to con be concerned with is the fan, uh, which connects uh, just over here. You'll have to unplug that. Um, on my last board, this was glued to the bottom case. Uh, this one looks like it was glued at some point, uh, but that's obviously come off. So this thing's just kind of free-flowing, so I don't really have to worry about that. I'll just take this whole thing off together. Um, I'm just going to lift this whole board out of here and flip it over so we can see the underside. All right, so the board is out, and here's that little fan uh, that we were looking at. Uh, mine is quite dirty. I'm going to clean this up. Um, and it is just a 5-volt fan, so I'm going to hook up 5 volts power to this just to see if the fan is even working. Um, if not, may have to replace that. Um, but yeah, let me clean this up first. That's got the, clan, the fan uh, cleaned up a little bit, and I've hooked it up to 5 volts uh, my power supply here. So we're going to give it some voltage, see if it works. And the fan does appear to be working just fine. Uh, so let me and turn that off. So we're going to keep this. 
Okay, so as far as removing uh, this little power module board, this guy, uh, it is sitting in here uh, just underneath it. So we got these two pins and these two pins uh, that need to uh, be desoldered. And I am actually really terrible at this, and it will take me a while. I would recommend just go slow. Um, and I'm going to save myself the embarrassment of having you watch me do it. And I'm just going to get it done, and then I'll be back as soon as I have this uh, board off. Okay, well, I'm about halfway there. Um, don't really have any <laughs> tips for you other than uh, use plenty of flux and get a good soldering iron and just using some uh, solder wick with this desoldering braid uh, to suck the solder up. Um, so these two are just about done. It's going to work on these two up here. And then this board should pull off, and I'm just going to kind of heat it up and you know, just kind of get the pliers on there and just kind of wiggle it back and forth until, you know, once these things heat up, um, until I can get that out of there, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I did get it out of there. Um, and taking a look at this board... It doesn't appear to have that same problem with uh, that little capacitor or whatever that is. Um, it's possible the other one, I might have crushed it while using these to get it out of there. Um, but anyway, um, here's the board. I just need to clean up these holes a little bit because I'm going to need to stick the new one through there, those pins. Uh, so now we got to solder some pins onto the new board. Um, if you don't have pins, you might have to desolder these uh, to use for the other board. Uh, luckily, I have a whole <laughs> kit of pins, uh, so I don't need to do that. I'm just going to take some of here, uh, some new pins, because I don't like desoldering things. Uh, it's a real pain. I'm not good at it. Um, and I've got spare parts, so I'm going to use them instead. So these things are pretty much standard size. Um, I forget exactly what size these ones are. I don't know, whatever that is, 2.54 millimeters. Um, anyway, um, they'll fit right into there. I'm going to need three pins, and I'll pull out the center one. And that should fit fine. I think down here I just needed four and pull out uh, the middle ones. Uh, so all you got to do is you take one of these, some clippers. It's hard to do through the camera, but I needed three. And messed that up let me try it again okay so don't try and cut these <laughs> while looking through the camera you're just going to mess it up uh, but anyway just take uh, these little pins and I'm going to need to remove the center pin on this one so there we go and then I need to remove the center two pins on this one Okay, so these should fit nicely uh, into the board, like so, and the other side. Like so. So we're going to solder these into place, uh, and then we have uh, new mounting pins uh, to solder onto the main board.
All right, now that we've got our pin soldered back on here, it's just a matter of uh, reattaching this module back onto the main board. Um, and the pins really only line up one way. So we're going to put these back into here. And it should fall into place. And now we just got to flip this over. We got to solder this back onto the main board. And then we're pretty much done. And reassembly is pretty much the same process in reverse. I put the fan in here, um, but it had come undone. I think it just needs a little dab of hot glue. That's how they had it in here in the first place. So if I can get this down in there somehow without making too much of a mess. Just glue this in place. It shouldn't need much. Oh boy, I did make a mess. That's okay. I don't think it got on the actual fan blade. And that'll keep that in place. Give it a little dab on this side. And that is good. Okay, we just need to reconnect that ribbon cable. Push this black clamp back in place. Looks like that's a good connection. This gets plugged in like so. Really only fits one way. Then we could button this thing back up and see how we did. So I've got everything reinstalled, put back together. And I've already done a quick test, but we could see if we turn off the return pump. Hopefully you heard that click. I'm going to turn it back on. Hear the click. The relays are working again. We have a successful repair. I've retested all the outlets. They all seem to be working. Um, so yeah, so there you have it. So for the cost of a $2 little power module, uh, I was able to get that $300 energy bar working again. I'm really glad it was such a inexpensive mod. Or uh, not mod, but a uh, repair. Um, and yeah, so uh, my fish are, are saved. Um, you know, the Apex is really is the life support of my tank here. Um, yeah, I do need to do an update on this. I will at some point. Um, but I thought, you know, since I had to do this work on that energy bar, I would document it and upload a video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.